Now the Warriors just inbound, and that's it. There's a new NBA champion, and it's a team from Toronto, Canada. We, the North, are now we, the champions. The Raptors, the 2019 NBA champs. Adrian Rojanowski reporting that Kevin Durant is, in fact, headed to Brooklyn. I love how past the big end. He pulls out of the shooting hand side. Steph Curry with a lot of contact. Uh-oh. He's holding that left wrist. Worst possible news for the Warriors. Klay Thompson has suffered a full tear of his right Achilles. If it's running into the front court, <laughs> Draymond you finds him another it. three. Oh. Got it! 62! 62! <laughs> Steph is doing everything! There is a different energy to this man's game. The Memphis Grizzlies are in the playoffs. They eliminate the Golden State Warriors. Just didn't go our way. Tried to make the most of it. Come back, bottle this up. Everybody make the right strides. Take advantage of the summer. And don't want to see us next year. Two years removed from their loss in the 2019 NBA Finals, the expectations for Stephen Curry and Golden State had changed. Or at least they had for everyone outside of the newly built Chase Center. You see, there are certain signs that signify the fall of a dynasty. Conflict amongst the team star players. Career changing injuries. The closing of a prime window. In some ways, the Warriors franchise had seen flashes of all three. And now, after finishing with the league's worst record in 2020, they had failed to make the playoffs for a second straight season after being bounced from the play-in game by the Grizzlies a year prior. Questions began to arise about whether or not Stephen Curry was capable of once again leading his team to a championship, especially after years of having the luxury of sharing a team with one of the most talented scorers the game has ever seen. After all, how could someone be an all-time great without adding an NBA Finals MVP to their resume? Curry heard all the noise, and he, as well as other members of the franchise in the Bay, knew that the core pieces were still intact, on pace to finally be healthy and able to share the floor together come playoff time. The development of the electric young guard Jordan Poole over the past year, return of former Finals MVP Andre Iguodala, and the addition of two lottery picks in Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody meant that the Warriors roster was retooled and finally ready to make some noise just in time for the NBA's 75th anniversary season. You know, our culture remains the same and everything that we do on the court and how we play will be probably pretty similar to years of past where it highlights you know, how different we are as a team, especially you when know, me and Clay are out there and Draymond. From the opening tip of the regular season, you could see there was a familiar fire behind these Golden State Warriors. They opened the first 20 games of the season with an 18-2 record, with Curry going off for 28 points per game over the stretch. This included a triple-double in an opening night win over LeBron James' Lakers and a 50-point, 10-assist explosion versus Atlanta that made him the oldest player to ever put up the stat line. Steph had faced his share of criticism since the team's collapse in the 2019 Finals, and coming off one of the best statistical seasons of his career the previous season, was on a mission to prove that he was still playing at a two-time MVP level. It's just incredible to watch Steph. I think his greatness is at the level now where we just expect it. Maybe that's the true measure of greatness when you know, a guy can hit nine or ten threes and you don't even bat an eye because you've seen it before and you know you're going to see it again. After weeks of buildup, a crowning moment of the regular season and his career came on December 14th, 2021. The three-point record has always been something I've looked at and kept track of and understand you know, the longevity that is required to reach those heights. What Ray Allen has done, stretching the imagination of what it means to shoot the three-pointer and make it a pivotal and important part of your game. I've taken that confidence and run with it. We all talk about, you know, who's the GOAT? And the reality is it's all subjective. 
But the one thing that isn't subjective when you talk to anyone is who's the greatest shooter ever. There is no debate. On the cusp of history, the Golden State Warriors find themselves in New York City at Madison Square Garden as Steph Curry is now two away from setting the all-time three-point mark. Ray Allen is here with the current record holder for the most threes in NBA history. Reggie Miller is here. Steph's dad is here. Uh, it's, it's just a sort of a celebratory mood here tonight. So Steph to tie it. There it is. I knew he would make his first one. He equals Ray Allen very quickly, barely took a minute, and stands on the doorstep of history right now. There's that cross screen again to Wiggins. Steph, three, there it is! NBA three-point history. Stephen Curry stands alone as the most dominant distance shooter the game has ever seen. 2,974 threes and counting. I don't got much to say besides I appreciate everybody that's had a part in me being who I am on the court, off the court. Like, this is a, a career milestone because of everybody that I got to suit up with, everybody that set screens for me, everybody that passed me the ball, everybody that believed in our offense and believed in winning in the process. So um, this is truly special, man. To you know I watched Ray when uh, he passed Reggie in Boston and I had this moment. Uh, at the garden, this number right here has been on uh, been on my mind for a long time. So I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it, and uh, and just know that uh, I'm the greatest three point shooter in the, in the history of the league. That's pretty special to say. I'm finally ready to say it, baby. Let's go. <laughs> the new year brought some exciting moments for the Warriors. None bigger than the return of Steph's longtime splash brother Clay Thompson after being away from the game for 941 days. He went to reach, and Clay down the lane! I think he's healthy. Yo! Finally, having one of the game's great backcourts reunited, the Warriors were able to continue to build chemistry throughout the early months of the year and into the All Star break with the NBA's most exciting weekend being held in Curry's birth city of Cleveland, a place where he had experienced some legendary finals battles, the writing was on the wall for a big performance from the eight-time All-Star, and he would deliver one of the most memorable nights in the event's history. I had a few flashback nightmares. And the Kia MVP, to its only fitting, one of the NBA's 75 all-time greats, Steph Curry. See, this trophy has a very special meaning. Uh, honor Kobe, Gigi, everybody that was lost two years ago. So uh, very humbled, very blessed, and uh, I really appreciate it. Following the buzz around Steph's big night, the Warriors cooled off down the final stretch of the season. Despite the team's championship core still being intact, they were dealing with a crucial injury to their glue guy Draymond Green, and experienced the growing pains that come with incorporating so many new pieces into the fold. As Golden State continued trying to build chemistry, on March 16th against the Boston Celtics, they would be hit with another devastating blow. Now the Warriors being kind of grimy defensively. But Marcus Smart saves the possession, but again Tatum drops it. Yeah, so here it is right here. Steph and Marcus are going for the loose ball. Marcus dives and he goes right into Steph's knee. I mean in order to be healthy come playoff time, Stephen Curry would miss the final 12 games of the regular season, in which Golden State would go 5-7 and seven to end the year. Despite the rough ending, the Warriors still managed to finish with a 53-29 record, good enough for third best in the West. Curry would finish the year with his 8th All-NBA selection averaging 25 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds per game, and led the NBA in three-pointers made for the seventh time in his career. Golden State now turned their attention to the postseason, with their trio of Curry, Thompson, and Draymond all finally being set to be active and sharing the floor for the first time since the 2019 Finals. 
Only this time, the mission was to once again bring gold home to the bay. Round 1 would see the Warriors match up with soon-to-be back-to-back MVP Nikola Jokic and the six-seeded Denver Nuggets. Curry was set to make his return in Game 1, but was regulated to a roll off the bench for the first time in his playoff career, playing with a minutes restriction to err on the side of caution. This opened the door for Jordan Poole to make his playoff debut as a starter, in which he'd explode for 30 points in a 123-107 win in Game 1. It was clear the Nuggets just didn't have the firepower to hang with the high-scoring offensive attack of Golden State, as the Warriors began experimenting with a deadly small ball lineup that included Curry, Poole, Clay, first-time All-Star Andrew Wiggins, and Draymond Green at the 5. The fast-paced scoring would lead to Steph dropping 34 points in 22 minutes off the bench in a Game 2 win. And once he returned to the starting lineup, Golden State would complete the gentleman's sweep, winning the series 4-1. Round 2 would be Golden State's greatest challenge yet, as they faced a team they knew all too well following their elimination the previous year. The young Memphis Grizzlies had been on a tear during the regular season, earning the two-seed after riding the momentum of rising star Ja Morant, matchup nightmare Jaron Jackson Jr., and a group of gritty role players. This would be the first playoff series that the Warriors didn't have home court advantage since the 2018 Western Conference Finals against Houston, but Golden State would enter Game 1 with revenge on their minds. Well, he's got to take it personal if they're going to defend him with a small perimeter guy. Oh, Gary Payton with the flush goes right at Bain. Curry, step back three. It's good. Steph Curry with his fifth three-pointer. Captain Battle Thompson, Thompson fits. Fires three-pointer. Bang! Clay Thompson from downtown. They would complete a 117 to 116 win in Memphis, led by a 31-point performance by Jordan Poole off the bench. Curry and Morant had combined for 58 points, going back and forth in a contest that showcased a battle of the present and future at the point guard position. Despite taking the loss, Ja, who had been a force all season long, gave the Warriors a front row seat to his growing greatness in game two. Seven to shoot. Morant looking for a runway. Now a step back for Morant. It's a tough feeling, um, but we understand the big picture. You know, we came, got one, take care of our home court on, on Saturday. You have to learn the lessons you need to learn. We know we're ready for it, and we're ready to bounce back and get ready for, for the game on uh, Saturday. Golden State had still been able to steal home court advantage for the series, and in Game 3, showcased exactly why they still belonged at the top of the Western Conference. Golden State would pull off a convincing 30-point win with Curry dropping 30, along with a combined 48 points from Klay Thompson and Jordan Poole. An injury to Morant in the fourth quarter would all but seal the fate of the Grizzlies for the rest of the series, as Golden State would win two of the next three, including 34 and 29 point daggers from Stephen to send Memphis home in six. We can continue to build on this as we look forward to the next round, no matter who we play. So not lost in this journey is the fact that we're still trying to peak at the right time. It's an exciting time to get past this series and look forward to what's coming next. Golden State's matchup in the conference finals would be an unexpected but deserving opponent, as the fourth-seeded Dallas Mavericks had shocked everyone beating the defending Western champs and number one seed Phoenix Suns in seven games the previous round. Luka Doncic had already proven to be one of the game's elite players and now was looking to add a trip to the NBA Finals on his already growing list of accolades. The Warriors came out firing from the opening tip in game one, handing the Mavericks a loss in back-to-back -back games in the Chase Center to open the series. But it was game three the first game in Dallas 
that Stephen Curry would demonstrate the level of play that separates champions from the rest. Curry takes a handoff, accelerates front court, gets all the way inside hand, up and good, and a foul. Curry left corner with the shot, it's up and splash! Warriors retake the lead. Three, Steph got it! Oh, what a shot! He is ruthless! Curry at three, bullseye! Was that just Shimmy to you or for me? To you. Okay. To you. The Mavericks would respond with a win of their own in game four. But similar to round one, Golden State would answer with a 10 point win to eliminate Dallas in five. Stephen Curry's performance earned him the inaugural Magic Johnson Western Conference Finals MVP award, the first elusive postseason MVP trophy of his career. This is a blessing. Obviously, it's a team effort to get back here with Trey myself for us to be out the mix for the last two years and to be where we belong back in the finals. Uh, it's a special, our fan base, to do it in this new building. This isn't the ultimate goal, but we got to celebrate this because all we went through these last three years. So. Earning a sixth finals appearance in eight years, the first led solely by Curry since 2016, there was a legacy on the line in the 2022 NBA Finals, and Stefan was ready to respond. Solid hardware, baby. We're going back to the ship where we belong, going to the wins. 58 years. That's how long it had been since Wilt Chamberlain's Philadelphia Warriors met Bill Russell's Boston Celtics in the 1964 NBA Finals. A lot has changed about the game of basketball in the decades since then, but it was only fitting for two of the NBA's most historic teams to match up in the championship series of the league's 75th anniversary. The Boston Celtics had quite possibly the most difficult road to the finals in recent memory, having to go through the Kevin Durant-led Brooklyn Nets in round one, the defending NBA champion Bucks in round two, and the number one seeded Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. Following a first team All-NBA selection at only 23 years old, Jason Tatum had emerged as a top player in the league over the course of the playoffs winning the first ever Eastern Conference Finals MVP. He, along with fellow All-Star Jalen Brown and Defensive Player of the Year Marcus Smart, made the Celtics a dangerous opponent for Curry and the Warriors on the game's biggest stage. You got the sense from you last summer that you believed you could be here then. What was it that you saw or believed that made you feel like the, the team you had could be here? You could feel like we were close, close to being in that conversation where you're a serious contender to come out of, you know, out of the West. And then coming into this year, like I still was surprised by our start, like I said, but that was the gas in the tank for the whole summer and for the start of this year, knowing that we were going to be uh, a problem this year. And we got four more wins to, to make it all worth it, but it's a good feeling. One has been the NBA's golden standard for a decade. The other is the game's original monarchy. They will make the next chapter of NBA history together. Game one saw the Warriors get off to a hot start, with Stephen Curry playing at a level that the game hadn't seen in over two decades. Curry's historic 21 point first quarter was the most scored in a single quarter of a finals game since Michael Jordan in 1993. But the resilient Celtics stayed close throughout the second quarter and found themselves with the lead as the two teams headed into halftime. The third quarter had belonged to the Warriors all postseason long, and this night would be no different, as Golden State would win the quarter 38-24 to take a 12-point lead. However, it was Boston, who had been resilient all season long, that went on a historic run in the fourth to shock the basketball world. To Horford for the lead.
nothing run for Boston. Brown on the baseline. Horford inside. Counted in one. Celtics take game one of the 2022 NBA Finals. In one of the most surprising upsets in recent finals history, the Celtics had handed the Warriors their first home loss in the playoffs, stealing home court advantage and putting the pressure on Golden State for a must-win game two. It's not ideal, but um, believing who we are, how we responded all year, how we responded in the playoffs after a loss, so learn a lot from that fourth quarter. Obviously, they made a lot of shots. We know they're a good team, so are we. We got to respond on, on Sunday. After failing to capitalize on a 34-point statement from Curry to open the series and facing the possibility of traveling to Boston down 0-2, the Warriors were fully aware of the stakes involved with Game 2 and adjusted their game plan accordingly. Determined to slow down the Celtics role players' hot shooting, Golden State's defensive intensity was noticeably high, no one more so than the former MVP himself. Stephen Curry would have one of the most impressive defensive performances of his career, holding his own in ISO situations and coming up with three steals over the course of the night. On the offensive end, he would continue his aggressive attack, scoring 29 points and knocking down five threes to help bury the Celtics 107 to 88. While getting the win relieved some pressure, it didn't completely solve the Warriors' problems, and they knew they had to steal back one of the two games in Boston to regain their chances of winning the series. It's a must win game, we knew that. Blow our way back into the series, give us some life, and now we get to uh, take the show on the road and try to go win one in Boston. We have to, so it's a good night. Yeah. As expected, the Celtics were ready to defend TD Garden in Game 3, with Tatum, Brown, and Smart all combining for 77 points to help Boston go up 2-1. Curry had come up with another big night, dropping 31 points and playing a big part in another large third quarter for Golden State. But foul trouble had led to an extended stay on the bench early in the fourth quarter, allowing the Celtics to pull away late. The situation is what it is. We're on the road. We must win game, game four. We had a must win game after you know, a tough, tough one in game one. And we got game two. So the flow, we still feel like we you know, obviously can win the series. And we got to come out with the right inten intensity and focus in game four. He's meant so much for our team, the whole Bay Area. He's the reason when things were bad that we still felt like we just got to keep working. We're going to figure it out because we still have Steph Curry. Game four was once again seen by the Warriors as a must win. Either they steal back home court with the momentum headed back to the Bay, or they find themselves faced with the notoriously difficult 3-1 deficit that has ended the championship hopes of many contenders. Boston's garden was rocking from the opening tip, with everyone in the building knowing how pivotal the result would be for the rest of the series. Jason Tatum and the Celtics started the game strong, answering the Warriors offense shot for shot in a close first quarter. However, it was Stephen Curry, normally known for his quiet demeanor, who had heard the talk from Boston fans in game three, and was determined to let them and the world know that this was his moment. Back to back long distance threes and a five point lead for the Warriors. Curry gets free. Gets some contact. Land got it and one. Steph Curry felt the bump. Brown picks up his third. Got a chance for a three point play. The Celtics had still managed to go on a run in the second quarter, following the lead of their two all star wings on the way to a six point halftime lead. But from the moment the team stepped onto the parquet floor for the second half, it was Curry who would elevate his game to legendary status. Curry launches a three. It's good. Curry. It's good. Steph Curry from downtown. Curry again. Oh, Steph Curry from way downtown. He's furious. There was contact there. Boston would try to stay within striking distance like they had in game one, but every time they would get close, it seemed like Steph had an answer, finding ways to score and letting the crowd know exactly what they were witnessing. As the final buzzer sounded, Curry had put on an all-time great performance, 
finishing with 43 points and 10 rebounds to tie the series headed back to the West Coast. I know you won't say it, but we can. It looks like you are really just putting these guys on your back right now. I know your foot's not right. How are you doing it? Been here six times. You got a lot of experience in terms of just staying composed, confident in what you can do. Uh, the endurance to be able to fight through the foot and just play my game for you know, however many minutes I'm out there. Uh, but to win on the road and get home court advantage back, big, big for this group. Special shout out Steph Curry, man. What a, what a performance. My goodness. You guys are one of the greatest to ever run that point position. My goodness. By any means necessary, baby. Back in the series. As the first player in NBA Finals history to record a 40-point, 10-rebound, and 7 threes made stat line, Steph's Game 4 did more than just make a statement in the arena. It sent out a message to every fan, critic, and purist the game has to offer. Stephen Curry was not just capable of performing in the NBA Finals. He was out to prove that he's one of the best performers the game's biggest stage has ever seen. Even though the Celtics hadn't lost back-to-back -back games at any point in the postseason, the odds seemed to be swinging in the Warriors' favor as the series shifted back to Chase Center for Game 5. The confidence from their previous win clearly leaked over early on, with Golden State jumping out to a 24-8 lead with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Boston had made a name for themselves all season long with their ability to claw back into games, and despite the early deficit, would put together a huge second and third quarter to only trail by one heading into the fourth. Stephen Curry had struggled from beyond the arc throughout the game and would eventually fail to hit a single three for the first time in his postseason career. But the attention the Celtics paid to him would open up opportunities all over the floor for his teammates. No warrior saw this impact as much as Andrew Wiggins, who after having a big performance in game four, followed up with his best game of the postseason, scoring 26 points and continuing his elite defense down the stretch to help Golden State pull off a 104-94 win. The Warriors were now one win away from once again writing their name in history books. Yeah! One more. One more. This is the moment for Steph to define and, and show everybody, I can carry a team to the, to the top of the mountain and win a championship on my back. I think they smell blood. I think that Steph Curry, I have a very hard time imagining he's gonna even come close to duplicating his performance from game five. I think he's gonna come there in Boston and play lights out for the second game in a row. On June 16th, 2022, the Golden State Warriors would step on the floor in Boston with the hopes of ending their season via an elimination game six. There was a heightened sense of urgency for the Celtics, who after overcoming two seven game series already in these playoffs, were fully prepared to stretch this series to its limit. The home team would come out firing, pulling ahead 12 to two early on in an attempt to shake the confidence of the Warriors. However, like champions do, Golden State would respond accordingly, and it would come in the form of a historic run unlike anything seen in the finals in the past 50 years. Three corners, right side is good! Draymond Green tips it out to Poole, that Poole nails the three! Poole pushes, finds Wiggins, Wiggins throws it down! And the Celtics need another timeout! Golden State scored 21 in a row! The Warriors' 21-0 run forced the Celtics to play from behind the remainder of the contest, and although they would eat into the deficit slightly in the third quarter, it was Stephen Curry who would fittingly shut the door on Boston's championship hopes. Curry sidestep, wide open three, got it! It's good, Steph Curry from downtown! Curry along three, it's good! Steph Curry from way down! Behind Curry's 34 points, 22 of which came in the second half, Golden State had achieved what seemed to be impossible early in the series, defeating Boston in three straight games and once again earning themselves basketball's ultimate prize. The emotions just pouring out. 
It might be his fourth, but it means so much. It's over. The Golden State Warriors return to a familiar place. They're on top of the NBA world. The fourth title in eight years. The Dubs dynasty is still very much alive. Congratulations. You are the 2022 NBA champion. And for the first time ever, he's an NBA Finals MVP. The 2022 Bill Russell NBA Finals MVP award goes to Stephen Curry. I'm happy for everybody, but I'm thrilled for Steph. To me, this is his crowning achievement in what, what's already been an incredible career. After averaging 31.2 points, six rebounds, and five assists in the 2022 NBA Finals, Stephen Curry had become the first player in league history to average that stat line in the Finals with over five threes made per game. He had joined the legendary company of Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Jerry West as the only people to average such a stat line in multiple finals and became only the third player under six foot three to win a finals MVP trophy. But most importantly, Stephen Curry had once and for all proven where he belongs in the history of the game. You can talk forever about how he changed the game with his shooting touch or how he's easily the greatest three point threat the NBA has ever seen. But now there is no more denying that he also belongs in the conversation of the game's all time greats. After nearly three years of struggles and doubts, Curry had put the Warriors on his back when it mattered most and carried them to a championship with one of the most memorable finals performances in recent memory. They had said he'd never make it back. They had said he couldn't perform when it mattered most. They had said he needed a finals MVP to validate his legacy. But what are they gonna say now?